Good morning, class. I thought I'd discuss the research paper and some of the uh, particulars um, of that assignment. Um, as we finish up, right, because this week is our last week of the poetry unit, we're getting into our final unit, which is the drama and the plays. Um, over the course of the month of November, you're going to be reading three plays, a, a one act play, a two act play and a three act play. Um, you will have individual assignments as well, weekly assignments like quizzes and discussion posts, which basically during this unit, uh, you're going to be finalizing, you know, really the last discussion post, the last quiz, um, the last actual unit test, which will be with drama. And then we get into more of um, really the big issues uh, as it relates to assignments for this class, which would be the Proctor U final exam uh, in December. And then, of course, uh, this research paper that is going to be, you know, covered throughout the, you know, the entire month of November into that little bit of December over the drama unit and your particular topic that you choose uh, from that list. And I will bring that list up uh, because you're, you're going to see that next week. I'll probably go ahead and open up a good bit of all the weekly folders <clears throat> in November. So you can go ahead and read ahead if you want. That would probably be wise, especially since you're going to be uh, working on your research paper that deals with some of these uh, particular dramas. Uh, it will give you time to go ahead and do some of those weekly Sunday assignments earlier. Uh, so that will leave you some time to do some of the research to start drafting and sending drafts and revising your particular research paper, as well as preparing for the drama exam and your Proctor U final exam. So the guidelines, as you can tell here, pretty much the same format that we've been using uh, in SA1, SA2. You're still using the MLA 9 format. This particular paper needs to be nine pages in length or 2250 words plus a work cited. Um, some of the essays in the past, like the fiction essay, the poetry essay, some folks are not really following the paper length or the word count. And you're losing some points if you're really, really short, right? Um, when I say a seven page paper, like with the poetry exam and only get three pages, well, you're going to be losing a good bit of points. And technically what I'm doing there is each page or each, uh, if you're below a certain amount of word count, you're losing six points, um, for each page that you're short from your final grade. So be careful of that. Um, when I say seven pages, I, I sort of really mean seven pages, no more, no less. When I say nine pages, I, you know, same thing. I really mean nine pages, no more, no less. Uh, and if you really start with this particular project early enough and you get your six scholarly sources and read through them and take notes, and highlight the quotations that you want to use out of those sources in your research paper. Because again, the key word research, you're going to have to quote from your six sources. You're going to have to quote from your primary source, which would be that particular drama or play that your topic is on. So you need to use textual evidence. You need to use quotations. Uh, probably later in this week or possibly next, I will send out how you should go about quoting drama as it relates to the MLA format in your paper. It's a little bit different than prose writing. It's a little bit different than poetry, though there's some elements that are still the same. Um, please 
look at those handouts. It will save you some points. Um, especially, I mean, some of the poetry was not really, uh, some papers didn't, the students didn't quote the poetry correctly. So they're losing points. They lost points when they didn't, you know, quote the fiction writing correctly. So this particular paper is going to be due on Sunday, December 5th by 1159. So that roughly gives you, you have about five weeks or so if you started, you know, this week. Uh, it's going to be due during week 16, basically about a week before the final exam is due. Uh, you need to choose one of the three drama prompts to write your research paper on. And I will preview those drama prompts here momentarily. You want to find at least four sources from Galileo or, you know, the college library or the public library. Two scholarly books, two scholarly journal articles. If you attend the uh, virtual library orientation next week, when Lorna, the librarian from Camden, comes and discuss a little bit more about the resources and the tools that uh, the college library has to offer, it will be very helpful uh, as it relates to finding those four sources using Galileo, using the databases, using the library. Uh, that session will be recorded. I will upload it to uh, the weekly Blackboard folder. So you can, if you can't make it, you can at least review it, uh, especially if it's been a while since you wrote a research paper at the academic level. Uh, you should have got a either an in-person orientation or a virtual orientation uh, when you took English 1101, however long that was. You also want to find two scholarly web sources. And usually the, the best sites to find these from are the .edu, the .gov, and the .org sites. Uh, be careful the .com. And again, if you attend that library orientation that we do next week, I sent out Teams invites earlier this week. You should have received those in your email. Or if you watch that video sometime next week, Lorna will go through and talk about this thing called the crap test about how you can evaluate sources, not only on Galileo and databases and libraries, but also the internet. You don't want to get all your information from Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not a academic source. Um, you want to be careful of using spark notes and end notes and cliff notes. Um, because technically the type of research that you need to do for this particular research paper, uh, you're not going to find that information in those particular, um, study guides, which that's basically what a cliff note, a spark note, an end note, they're both basically study guides. Uh, you're not going to find the information that's going to make you be successful with this paper, uh, in those particular sources. So I would not use uh, Wikipedia as a scholarly source. Now you can use the references and we can talk a little bit more about that uh, next week because everything that's posted on Wikipedia, if it's really a good and lengthy article, there's usually references at the end of the page. Most of those references are scholarly journal articles, books, and websites. Now, you can piggyback and use some of those. You just cannot quote stuff from Wikipedia. Below, I talk about how much time you're going to be spent or you need to spend on each section of this paper. I also show you sort of a tentative um, assignment schedule that you can kind of follow or modify to sort of fit your own needs. Uh, but it will take you through the whole entire process of what you need to do as it relates to um, writing this paper and being successful on this paper. So 20% of your time will be spent on the beginning and ending of your paper. 
So just, you know, kind of keep that in mind. You're probably going to at least need to spend 10% of your time at the beginning, getting started, understanding the assignment, picking the topic. And then the last 10% will be really finalizing, dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's uh, pretty much that last week of November, first week of December. The good chunk of your time is going to be spent doing the hard research, right? You're going to have to visit a library or you're going to have to visit Galileo or databases online. You're going to have to read those six sources. Uh, you're going to have to take notes and annotate those six sources. You want to highlight the quotations that you want to use out of each one of those six sources. Um, so that's going to be about 80% 80, 80 of your time. So if you're a procrastinator, you want to sort of get out of that habit because time will not be on your side especially if you have to go to the library and you really have to read through some of these, you know, journal articles could be anywhere from 10 pages in length to 50 pages in length. Uh, websites will be a little bit easier to read. Uh, book chapters or books are going to be pretty lengthy. So you're going to have to de devote your time to actually do the research. Again, Keyword research, you need to include quotations from these six sources. Uh, so you need to read through your sources multiple times. The earlier you start, the better um, the paper should be because it's going to be less stressful on you as it relates to, you know, if you don't have enough sources or if you wait until toward Thanksgiving to get all your sources. That's not really a smart way to approach this paper. Um, if you, you know, decide to procrastinate and wait and do that, you know, that, that's up to you. I mean, we're all an adult here, but I can tell you, your blood pressure is going to rise, your stress level is going to rise, and your grade at some point will start to collapse and suffer because of poor time management and research skills. Now, 60% of your paper is going to be spent actually writing, drafting, revising, and finalizing your paper. That's where you're putting all the pieces of, you know, your six sources, really seven, because the seventh source, your primary source, is going to be your play. So you're going to want to quote from the play as well throughout your nine-page paper. So you basically, everybody has at least one month and two weeks to complete this assignment, start the finish. Now, to begin, depending on when you start it, depends on how much time you really have. If you wait to Thanksgiving, then obviously you're going to be in a rush. Uh, if you start next week, you have a good bit of time to get things rolling. Again, work smarter, not harder. Uh, I wouldn't wait until a week or so before this thing is due to try to do it. Uh, students in the past have done that. You can easily tell because the writing is not up to par. Uh, it lacks a lot of things, it lacks citations, it lacks sources. Uh, the proofreading and editing aspect of it is poor. And ultimately, the grade is going to suffer. This is a good chunk of your grade. I've seen folks who went from a 95 at the beginning of November and finish out with a 75 or lower by the time they came into the final Proctor U thing. And it's just because they didn't use their time wisely. They thought being, you know, they had a 95, they can just sort of relax, throw something together couple hours before the thing is due and that was going to be suffice. Well, it hurt their GPA and some folks almost failed, if not failed, uh, because they approached this particular assignment in that mindset. So please do not do that. Your health will um, 
be thankful that you didn't do it and your overall grade and GPA will be glad that you didn't do it. Uh, the last day that I can review drafts will be by midnight on Thursday, December 2nd. Again, multiple dra drafts of this paper is going to be needed. Um, how many drafts you have or how many drafts you send really is up to you. Depends on what really what grade you want. A's on this paper need to have obviously more than one draft. Uh, you want to use smart thinking and me and you want to send as many rough drafts as humanly possible to both of us. Um, the more drafts, generally the better the grade. The earlier the drafts come in, generally the better the grade. Um, just because I have time, I could read multiple drafts early on. As it gets closer to the deadline, because I got four other English classes doing a research paper, and everybody's going to sort of be stressed and sending drafts at the last minute, I'm not going to be able to constructively give the greatest feedback if you wait two days before this thing is due. So, you know, a week before it's due is good. Two or three weeks before it's due, it's even better. Uh, please do not plagiarize this paper. Uh, several folks in the past, because they waited to the last minute to do anything, they start freaking out. They start asking other students for a research paper. They go online and buy a paper. Um, all that stuff will get flagged. And if this is your first offense, you will get the forever zero. Um, as it states in the college handbook, as it states in my syllabus, first offense, whether it's intentional, unintentional, the college doesn't look at it, you know, ignorance is bliss here. You should have known about plagiarism way before coming into this class. You learned about it in 1101, and I'm sure you learned about it in your other middle school or high school English classes at some point. Cheating is cheating. Uh, if you get caught, first offense is a zero. If you're foolish enough because you got caught early on because there were a few people that plagiarized either that fiction essay or that poetry essay, well, the second time, that's it. Uh, you get an F automatically in the course. And then you're going to go before a board of, you know, like the president, the vice president, a couple other people. And then they're going to really determine your fate as it relates to you staying a college student at this institution. They could suspend you for a couple semesters, or they can just flat out kick you out and bar you from attending Coastal Pines at any time. Uh, so please do not plagiarize. That's where sending multiple drafts. If you're having issues with how to cite a particular secondary source or how to cite drama, uh, please reach out, send drafts to me, send drafts to Smart Thinking, go to the library uh, that's closest to you as it relates to the college library. Ask the librarians for help. They're there to help you as well. Uh, nobody could really afford a zero at any time really in this class, but definitely on this assignment because it is a good chunk of your grade. It will bring you down two or three letter grades if you make a zero on this assignment. It's not a smart thing to do, so please do not do it. Um, again, by the time you get to the 18th of November, you should be sending me and smart thinking drafts. Basically from the 18th of November to the 2nd of December. Again, drafts are optional, but I will say those that sent drafts of the fiction essay, the poetry essay, those who send drafts of the research paper and previous classes generally are the ones that get the higher grade on those assignments and ultimately pretty much that, you know, higher grade in the actual class as well. Late papers will not be accepted because everybody has um, known when this due date was and is, right, the 5th of December. And you have nearly 
you know, six weeks to do this. So I would rather you turn it in earlier than try to turn it in, you know, after, because I just can't accept it. We have to move on to the Proctor U final exam. I'm going to have to get grades in for all uh, five of my English courses relatively within a two day period after the semester ends. So, I mean, everybody has the same amount of time. If you wait to start on it, that's on you. Um, if you, you know, forget when the deadline is or whatever the case may, may be, again, that's on you because it's, we're talking about it now. It's located in your assignment checklist. It's located in your syllabus. All that stuff has been available since week one of this semester. So there's really no excuse uh, of why you can't finalize this and submit it by the deadline. Remember exam three, which is going to be over drama. It's going to be due by 11.59 on Monday, November 29th. Uh, that's basically the Monday when we come back from Thanksgiving break. So don't forget about that. The other thing is the final exam, Proctor U, drama timed essay. I did send out an email about that uh, earlier in the week. You're going to have basically between December 5th through December 14th by 6 p.m. to take that exam. Again, I can't take late exams as it relates to the drama exam and i can't take late final exams so the due dates for those particular assignments are pretty much written in stone at this point um, i don't see much change to delay those uh, because by the time we get to the last week of november we've covered all the drama that we needed to cover we've read all the drama we needed to read You'll be able to take that exam. Again, it's going to be a password sensitive exam. I will email the password and everything um, probably a week or so before the actual exam happens. You can take it earlier if you want to. Uh, the Proctor U thing, I will send out information. The college will as well, I'm sure, as it gets closer to the final exam period. Um, with that, you're basically going to need to create your free Proctor U account. If this is not your first um, online course, you probably used ProctorU in previous semesters. Your same username and password should still work. You just want to make sure that it does still work before the final exam period happens. So you're not trying to figure out what's going on with your account. The other thing is you're going to need to have a working webcam and web mic, a working uh, desktop. Computer usually works best. Updates on your computer as well as Microsoft Word because you're going to have to type your essay from scratch using an outline and note cards as it relates to the final exam. You can't have a pre-written uh, rough draft already um, because that will be grounds of cheating. The proctor you uh, proctor will flag it, and you will get a zero if you do have a pre-written draft already. Um, the Proctor U event is going to be timed. Unlike some of the other time exams that we've had that were basically 75 minutes in length, the Proctor U is going to be 60 minutes. Uh, that's the Proctor U sort of standard. I can't change that really uh, since the college pays for these exams. That's why it's important that you only start the Proctor U exam when you're ready to actually sit down and type your essay in the 60 minutes that you have. We can't restart it. We can't reset it. We can't do a makeover or a do over or a makeup because the college pays for each one of these individual exams. So let's look at our tentative or what could be your tentative schedule and then we will kind of end it there so what i did here was sort of 
make up a tentative or generic working schedule to keep you on track with your research paper. So for the good bit of November, as you can tell here, is going to be spent, should be spent on your project. So we're looking at 43 days or roughly six weeks if you started today, and today being the 27th of October, or more or less starting on Halloween. That's sort of what I'm going at because Halloween is the last day for really the poetry unit. That's when the um, poetry exam is due. So 10% of your time between Halloween and the 4th of November, which is a basically a five day period, is understanding your topic and writing your tentative thesis statement. Basically, what is going to be the main idea of your entire research paper? Again, you can tweak that as it gets closer to you actually drafting the paper. Uh, but you need to sort of pick a topic, start doing a little bit of preliminary research on the topic, maybe start reading some of the plays ahead of time, because I will open those uh, weekly folders that have all the plays that we're going to cover uh, probably by the end of the week or Definitely next week. Moving along. About 20% of your time from November 11 or 4 through November 7th, about a four day period, you need to spend time finding two scholarly web sources that relate to your topic. You want to read, take notes, highlight the quotations you plan to use from each one of your sources there. Uh, from November 7th through November, or November 11th, about a five day period, again, about 20% of your time is, needs to be spent finding two scholarly journal articles from the library, either the databases or the Galileo College Library or the public library. Again, you want to read, take notes, highlight the quotations you plan to use from each one of those two sources. From November 11th through November 14th, again, about a four day period, 20% of your time needs to be spent finding research on the two scholarly books. Uh, ebooks are acceptable that you um, plan on using in your paper. So again, you want to read, take notes, highlight the quotations you want to use in your paper from those two scholarly books. And again, you probably want to use Galileo or the library to find uh, not only your two scholarly books, but also your two scholarly journal articles. From about November 14th through November 18th, about a five day period, 20% of your time is really going to be finalizing reading all the dramas, especially the one that you're writing your paper on, and then taking notes or highlighting any of the quotations that you plan on using from your play in your paper. From about November 18th through November 24th, a good week or seven day period, 30% of your time will be now spent outlining your particular research paper and really begin drafting your nine page research paper, including all seven sources, right? Six scholarly sources and your one primary source, which is your play. From November 24th through December 2nd, nine day period, 30% of your time should be spent revising your drafts and finalizing all your seven sources as it relates to your references inside the body of your essay, your works cited page, and if you need to include any additional sources to help you write your nine page paper. The last 10% comes between December 2nd and December 5th about a four day period. This is where you really want to proofread, edit, spell check, grammar check, format your final draft to be submitted by the 1159 Sunday, December 5th deadline. Again, depending on how fast you work and how smart that you work on this, you can modify this to fit your particular schedule. Uh, this is just something I put together to show you the scope 
Uh, if you start early enough, you will have enough time to really do a good job on this particular project. Uh, to get the best possible grade, I, again, I can't stress it enough, you want to start early on this particular assignment. Uh, as always, if you need help, please reach out, email, call. I do in-person tutoring. We can set up a time for that. Um, I do that weekly sort of tutoring online. If you want to set up uh, something there, we can do something via Teams or Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, visit the library, obviously. The librarians can help you. If you know anybody outside of class that knows how to do research papers really well, let them look at your work. Really, you know, multiple sets of eyes is the key here. And the biggest key is getting, you know, time management, managing your time. I realize everybody is busy. We got other classes. Uh, some of us may be dual enrollment. So you have your high school classes. Uh, you may have work commitments, kids. I've been there. I've done that. All of this is doable in a way that won't, you know, increase your blood pressure too much or damage your health too much if you work smarter and not harder and start earlier. Um, if you wait, if you drag your feet on it, then chances are you're not going to produce the best work. And please do not, I can't stress that enough, do not plagiarize this paper. Uh, you will get caught. The consequences will be severe. And, you know, the grade and your GPA overall won't be too happy with you. Um, I can do a lot early on. I can't, you know, be Superman if you start having issues uh, with this assignment three hours before it's due, right? I just, I mean, there's only so much I can do at that point, especially when you had nearly 45 days to get the help from smart thinking, from me, from the librarians, from other folks outside of the college, maybe who knows how to do research papers really well. And if you wait, to five hours or three hours or a day before a major assignment like this is due, there's just not much we can do at that point. Um, so please use your time wisely. I'm here to help. I can't read minds. So unless you email me or call me or come to a tutoring uh, session, I'm just going to assume that you're reading the, you know, you're reading the plays, you're going to the library, getting the research that you need. You're taking your own notes. You know how to quote. I'm just going to assume you know what you're doing um, because I can't read minds. I don't read minds. And you're probably going to know within the next week or so how much help you may need for this project because you know yourself better than anybody else as it relates to papers and research projects and reading dramas. If that's not your thing, then you already know it at the onset. You probably are going to need a little help, a little assistance. And that's when you need to reach out and lean on somebody. All right. So I want to wish everyone a good week ahead, good weekend. I hope everybody does really well on the exam. I still have a few uh, poetry essays left to grade. I hope to have those uh, graded by this time next week, if not sooner. Um, the exams shouldn't take me that long to grade. You should have a grade on those in you know, relatively short order once you submit it. This is the uh, handout that has the three particular research paper topics that deal with those three dramas that we're going to read throughout the month of November. So this will be in the week 10 folder. Uh, again, I'm going to open up pretty much 
week 10, week 11, week 12, um, week 13, possibly. I probably open up everything up until Thanksgiving week. Um, that way you can read ahead if you want to read ahead. If you still want to sort of stick, stick on track and pace yourself like you've been doing, do one week at a time, that's fine. Just keep in mind, you got that research paper that's going to be looming and hanging over your head. Um, if you don't try to commit some time to that a little bit each day. So until I, you know, start receiving emails or anything from, from the class needing help, uh, I plan to do a, another weekly session next week, uh, over the play do slash tutoring session. Um, if you want to call it that, of course, next week, we're going to do the, uh, library orientation uh, with Lorna. So please be able to join that or at least watch it because it will help you start finding those four sources from the library that you're going to need for this particular research paper assignment. So I hope everybody has a great rest of the week. Good luck on the poetry exam. I hope everybody has a marvelous week 10 uh, or week 11 rather. And um, I hope everybody's doing well out there, especially in other classes as well. Have a great day.